growth requires change. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you, if you're going to grow, it requires change and it's very uncomfortable. Okay. But Hey, listen, if you want to be comfortable getting your bed, right? Welcome back, back to the Zamas podcast, podcast, where we focus, focus on, on faith, family, fitness, finances, and, and friendships. friendships. I'm going to be reading from the book of Matthew, um, chapter 5, verses 13 through 14. Or actually, verses 13 through 16. And it reads, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. All right, family. So we're going to get into um, answering some questions from Let's Get Deep today. All right. So take it away, sweetheart. All right. We're going to start with the eyebrows. The icebreaker. Icebreaker. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Okay, choose. All right, let me see. You said I always choose from this side, right? So let me this see. side, because okay, it's closer to you. Let me choose this side. All right. It says top sheet or no top sheet. What's the top sheet? Oh, like the bed? Like you know how it's like the the fitted sheet and then that top sheet and yeah. then the comforter? Got it. So well you answer. But it's like, is it asking me, do I sleep with that top sheet? Because absolutely not. That stay laid down. I yeah. sleep with just the comforter. Well, I don't know. what is, It just says top sheet or no top sheet. I'm going to say no top sheet because... The yeah. top sheet end up, up off of there anyways. Yeah. I don't really know what that question is let's asking. Do a one. Yeah, let's do a different one. That one don't count. Okay. Facebook or Instagram? Instagram. Yeah, I'm gonna say Instagram. I don't even have Facebook. I don't have access to my Facebook, and it's driving me nuts. To you could have been just started over though. No, I don't want to start over. I want that page because mm, I got pictures on there. Uh, I was in a poke war. Now I lost. <laughs> real bad. Okay, deep. So we're gonna do deep. All right, so we got. It. If you had a boat, what would you name it and why? A boat. Yeah. If I had a boat. I would name it. What would I name a boat? I would name it Sally. <laughs> Why? Well, you get the joke. Instead of Sally, it's Sally. Why sail? You know, like you sail in a boat. Sally. Yeah. What about you? I'm gonna name it Little. What? I'm gonna name it Little. Uh... Little Queen. Little Queen. Yeah. Because, like, that's going to be my Little Queen's boat. Got it. I just really name everything Queen because, like, that I really, from age, like, 17 until about I met you, everyone called me Queen. Like, that was my name. Okay, so Little Queen. And mine is Sally. So, yeah. That's good. All right, Deeper. This is the last one, y'all. The car in the car. Have you ever done drugs? Which one? <laughs> Have I ever done drugs and which one? Why well, you on drugs? well, it depends on how you define drugs. There we go. I'm just saying, I've never done drugs, like hard drugs, but I've smoked weed. Um, did it say why? Did it say why? I don't know. Oh, it says which ones? I just smoke weed, but that's not a drug. That's a plant. It's not a drug. Well, it's not. All right, you all. So our scripture for today was Matthew chapter 5, 13, and the title of it was Salt and Light. Okay, so that's what our topic is going to be for today. Um, You know, my wife was asking us, what are we going to talk about? And I said, being an example. Okay, because that was the way for me to... um kind of give a description of what we're talking about without just saying being salt and light, okay? It made a little bit more sense saying that. But 
um, I want to talk about living the way we should be living. All right. You know, as I go about my day, you know, and I and I maneuver in the world, I realize that there are a lot of people that um, have this identity crisis. They don't really know who they are. They don't really understand who they are. Um, they think they're this body. Right. And therefore, um, they live in a constant state of unsatisfaction, right? Unsatisfaction with how they look, unsatisfaction with how they measure up compared to others, right? It's just, you know, it's really this identity crisis, okay? So this verse of scripture here is telling us, you know, how we should live our lives. First of all, we we're, we're, we should be living from the spirit, right? We should be living in the spirit realm. Now we are flesh, right? But we should be living through our spirit, meaning we should be operating from a place of love okay because mm -hmm. that's the that's the that's where we come from right god is love and and we're made in god's image okay so we should be operating in that space and we should be treating others the way we want to be treated you know i think it's very difficult for people to understand that or grasp that concept even if you don't believe in god like there's there's a lot of people that don't believe in god right which is baffling to me but there are people that don't believe in God. Yeah. Um, and the, even for the people that don't believe in God, you, you have to believe in something, right? It, I mean, you, you don't think that you just showed up here and this was an accident. Yeah. Um, so whatever it is that you believe in, understand that your life has a purpose, okay? And, and you didn't just show up here on the scene for no reason, right? Mm -hmm. You have a purpose. Now, in your purpose, your purpose should be um, I guess, executed in a spiritual manner, mm -hmm. meaning all the things that you're going to do to fulfill your purpose are, are of the spiritual realm. It's not of the physical realm. It's not just, you know, um, working with your hands, right? It's the intangibles. It's the things that you can't see. It's your character. It's the way you treat others. It's yeah. your um, responsibility. It's your uh, honesty. Things that you can't see, those are all spiritual things, all right? Spiritual is not a deep religious word. It just means things that you can't see, right? Or, or, or things that, that can't be measured in the lab, right? That's what spiritual is, all right? So I want to ask you a question, darling, because I, I can go on for forever, yeah. all right? I want to ask you a question. Why do you think it's so hard for people to um, just be kind? I mean, why is it so hard for people to be kind to other people? Um... Well, honestly, I think it's because so many people are walking around with a guard up and these walls up to protect themselves from experience any part of rejection and hurt. Mm -hmm. Like you just walk around with this guard up and feel like you have to be hateful towards people or not even hateful towards people, like just not showing love to mm -hmm. people because there's plenty of people that's like not necessarily rude or mean, mm -hmm. but they don't want to speak or it's yeah. hard for them to say i love you it's right. hard for them to say i support you it's hard for them to mimic god like things mm -hmm. and it's because most likely they've been hurt yeah and they don't want to experience whatever part of that hurt that they've experienced whether it's rejection whether it's like unforgiveness whatever it may be so whatever it is that they're dealing with or went through in their life is basically reflecting in <clears throat> sorry y'all it's reflecting in how they respond and how they treat people and that's how you like you see people and you just like dang you like they is super nasty it's not the fact that that person is nasty because their spirit wants to be caught like like regardless of how much i try to fight it i'm naturally a lover mm -hmm. regardless of what people do to me like what i went through with certain people like you see that with certain friendships yeah. like i I'm naturally a lover, so I'm yep. naturally just gonna be like, God, God say, forgive them a million times. I'm that person who's gonna forgive you a million times, yeah, to a certain extent. Like I'm gonna forgive you, but you're not necessarily gonna have access. So for sure, to answer your question, you, I feel like it's a lot of people have that guard up. Yeah, would you say that um, people live a majority of their life um, in the past, meaning like the things that may have hurt them in the past or the people that hurt them in the past? are still affecting them to this mm -hmm. day. And that's why it's so hard for them to treat people the way they want to be treated. Yeah. Would you, okay. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Well, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. They live in, oh, well, this happened to me, so this is why I am the way I am. Right. 
That's you living in the past because of something that happened to you in your past. Mm -hmm. And you can't have a future if you're living in the past. You're yeah. dwelling in the past. The way you operate is based off of the past. Yeah. All right. So going back to Matthew chapter five, right? Talking about salt and light. Um, just this first verse, chapter 13 or verse 13, excuse me. It says, you are the salt of the earth, but the but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. So just a brief explanation of what that means. Us being the salt of the earth, you know salt, you put salt on things to make it taste better, right? So us being the salt of the earth, we're supposed to be the ones that um, show up and we make things better with our presence. We make things better with how we live, okay? That's how we're supposed to be living our lives. We're supposed to be making things, making people. Everything we touch, everything around us should be made better because of our presence, okay? The next verse talks about us being the light of the world, all right? And it says, you know, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So again, given reference to how we should be living our life, right? If you, if you have something that is lit, right, it talks about a lamp. You're not going to put a lamp under a, what does it say? You're not going to put a lamp under a bowl, right? You, that wouldn't make any sense. The point of the lamp is to shine, right? It's to bring light to something, right. okay? So that's how we should be living. We, we, we want to show up and shine. We want to show up and live in a, in a way to where people see that we're different, right? The Bible also says, be in the world, but not of the world. So if we live from our spiritual essence and we understand who we truly are and we show up and we shine the way we should be shining, then people will see us, right? And they'll say, you know what? Something's different about that girl, Deja, right? She just, she's always happy, right? She seems to treat everybody with respect. You know, things don't get to her. Something's different about her, right? And at that point, you have an opportunity to show people, hey, this, this is, this is, this is who we are, yeah. right? I'm no different from you. We were created by the same creator, all right? There's one source, there's one creator, and we were both created in that image, okay? So the things that you see me doing, you can do also, right? That's, I'm no different from you. I just let go of the things of the past, right? And I don't let that stop me from being who I was called to be, all right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So, you know, I, I find it funny that there are a lot of people that really think that the world is against them yeah they really think that when they go out in the world people are looking at them in a way to where they're trying to they're trying to find i don't want to say it i don't want i don't want to say they're trying to find their faults but people are I was just about to say yeah that. I, don't, I don't want to say that i want to say they they believe that people are looking at them in a manner in which it's not beneficial to them and how they see themselves right yeah. they, they really believe that they are at odds with the world out there yeah but right? that's the problem that's how they're viewing themselves correct like, no, I, that's they, what i was gonna say okay, my bad. no you're good that's what i was gonna say they're not the world isn't at odds with them is they're at odds with themselves right yeah. their inner world and their outer world is clashing yeah okay and therefore self-conflict exactly they have self-conflict therefore they're they're seeing the world they perceive the world as being against them when really they're just against themselves and the world is a reflection of that right does that make sense yeah, yeah. okay so so <laughs> well, well you were gonna ask me a question what were you gonna ask me? um i was gonna ask you a question i actually forgot it whenever we had the same thought oh okay <laughs> but i do have a question another question for you mm -hmm. what do you feel like is your light my light yeah like what do you feel like is your light like you know how everyone has different like things that just makes you draw to them or like you ever see somebody be like hey that's a nice fella or like <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i say that sometimes that's a nice fella or like you know like you see something in them that just draws you to them right, like right. what is that one quality in you that just draws people in uh that's a good question i think I think there's I think there's multiple actually. Give me top three. Top three. So I think it's my encouraging nature. Encouraging. <laughs> yeah, it's my encouraging nature. I'm very encouraging. Um, I'm very uh, charming. So I've been told. 
<laughs> and and I'm a leader. Yeah. I'm a leader. I take responsibility for my actions and I am not um I'm not scared to say that I did something wrong even if it wasn't me. Yeah. That draws people to you. Yeah, big time. Yeah. So I would say that's that's my top three. What about you? Um, for me, I would have to go with my smile. Your smile, okay. And sometimes it's not even that I'm smiling because I'm just like a hundred percent happy. Yeah. I smile in situations if I'm nervous. I smile in situations if I'm thinking. I just be smiling, especially yeah. when I'm like not inside of my like comfort zone in my house. Yeah. I just be smiling. So one, I would say my smile. Two, I would say like my personality. Mm -hmm. Like I'm always cracking a joke. Mm -hmm. I don't really be like, I don't be that serious all the time yeah. unless it requires me to be serious. All right. Um, three, I would have to say my attitude to just make it happen. Yeah. Like, and that's whether I'm talking about myself or I'm talking to other people. Like yeah. my attitude is always like, okay, so what can you do mm -hmm. to make it happen? Or like, what's the next step? Like, right. let's get the ball on the road. Like, I don't want to keep talking about the same thing over yeah. and over again. So. Yeah, I think that's um, extremely powerful. And that'll kind of transition the conversation because I think there's, I think attitude is probably one of the most important things in the world. Um, your attitude towards yourself, your attitude towards others, your attitude yeah. towards life. Like attitude makes a significant difference in the way a person's life turns out. You know, if you take two individuals that have similar upbringings, similar lifestyles, similar um, skill sets, you know, and one person has an attitude of gratitude or an attitude of optimism, while the other person has an attitude of skepticism or pessimism, um, the one with the attitude of optimism is going to be much more successful, not because of anything other than their attitude. Yeah. Right. Your attitude makes all the difference in the world. You know, and I was having a conversation recently with uh, a friend of mine and we were just talking about how we, you know, we have we have different thought processes. Right. You know, they think in a way to where if they see um, if 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 they're in a particular situation and you have. You know, you got you got the adversity and then you got the opportunity. They're more so going to focus on the adversity and how to avoid that. Mm -hmm. While I'm of the mindset of the adversity is not my problem. Right. That That's not that's not up. That's I leave it in God's hands. I'm not here to dwell on the adversity or the challenges that may arise. I'm strictly focused on the possibility. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm an optimist that that person is not an optimist. They consider themselves something else. So the difference in attitude and the difference in mindset makes a significant difference in how your life ultimately turns out. Yeah. Right. And I think that other that other aspect of not being an optimistic is that how I say it? Optimistic. Not being yeah. optimistic, yeah. Um you you're not a light when you're the opposite of that. Yeah. Like you're not. Like yeah. no one wants to come to you or draw to you because if your focus is on the bad, basically, mm -hmm. then you're no one really wants to be around you because yeah. it, it, focusing on the bad is negative. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and, you know, there are a lot of people out here that are like that, right? Probably because, you know, I don't judge them, right? I don't yeah. judge them because of how they are, because maybe they have great reasoning. Right now, I don't judge them as a person, but I do judge the actions. Yeah. Okay. And there's a difference. So um, maybe they've gone through some things and maybe they have good reasoning for having the attitude that they have. Right. But that doesn't mean that they can't change. You see, if you if you realize that you're a certain way or you do things in a particular way and you know that it's not serving you, um, you can change. Okay. We say it over and over and over again. We probably got three or four episodes where we say the exact same thing. You can change, all right? You have the power to change. And a lot of people don't believe they have the power to change. They believe yeah. that this just is who I am, right? And I, I can't change it. I can't help it. That's not the truth, okay? That is not the truth. The truth is you can change. 
Okay. And you can be a different person than you have been in the past. Yeah. You just got to make the decision. You got to be intentional about it. You got to be All hungry right? to do it. Absolutely. Like, you you have to have a hunger to want to change. And yeah. in this life, at some point, you're going to change. And I feel like a lot of times people fight it so bad. And even with, you know, the whole religious aspect, spiritually, you are supposed to change. Mm -hmm. Like, God can't be doing a work in you if you're the same as your mom. Yeah. The same as your grandparents. Yeah. If your walk is the exact same thing, go to church every Sunday, go to church every Wednesday, do voluntary work on Saturday. Yeah. Part of this group, part of this group, part of that. You're following that same tradition. You're mm -hmm. following that same religion. You're not operating in God's full spirituality. Mm -hmm. Like you're not because you're literally following the tradition of what you know, happen and he's going to do a change in you, but you also have free will. So you have the opportunity to deny or either, you know, accept yeah. God's offering like, okay, well you can have this in the third, but it has to be a change in you. Like mm -hmm. you have to be the light It's necessary yeah. in order to truly, I feel like in order to truly see God for yourself, like yeah. me growing up, I don't feel, I did have a strong relationship with God because that like literally has always been my foundation. So mm -hmm. I'm grateful for that. But I didn't truly experience God until we like, until we had kids, mm -hmm. like, because it's like, you can't be a light for your children. If you're still one, the well in the past mm -hmm. two, what well, was me? Like yeah. you can't. So it's just an awesome thing when you actually accept, to grow and walk into that change yeah. like what's your light yeah ask yourself that what is my light like That's what good. do people see what do people see as my light when they look at me mm -hmm. and if it's something negative if people can't even give you that answer mm -hmm. it's time to sit back and do some more work <laughs> time to make the change if the beautiful part about life is um it's going to force you to change right absolutely you either change or you die Right, is it, it growth requires change? Okay, mm -hmm. if you if you're going to grow, it requires change, and it's very uncomfortable. Extremely. Okay, but hey, listen, if you want to be comfortable, get in your bed, right? Take a nap if you want to be comfortable. But if you want to live life and you want to grow and you want to become the person that you were called to be, um, you're going to have to get really, really uncomfortable and change, mm -hmm. change your habits, change your discipline, change the way you communicate with yourself, most importantly, and the way you communicate with others is going to require change and it's work, but you're going to live anyway, right? You're going to live your life anyway. So you might as well start making some changes. I, there's a book that I have. It's called The Slight Edge. Um, mm -hmm. it, it completely changed my thought process on incremental change because i used to think that the small things didn't matter but mm -hmm. that's not the truth the small things matter the most and over time those small things snowball right and they turn into huge things Wait, and then it compounds you. right and then it compounds okay so you you look up one day you do all this self-work and you do this growth and you go on your journey of becoming the person that you want to be or that you should be and then eventually you look up and you have people that love you, people that want to follow you, people that want to give you money, right? For your for your guidance, your counsel. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get all the benefits from becoming who it is that you want that you should be. Uh, so yeah, that's good, babe. And you mentioned something about having kids, and I think this is so important. You know, kids really expose who you are as a person. Yeah, like they really expose it. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're nasty, if you're if you're pessimistic if you have a bad attitude your children will reflect that mm -hmm. and when you see them acting a certain way you're like oh like i don't like that right you're a child you ain't supposed to be acting like that well what makes it what makes it okay for you to act like that right, right? you don't want your kids to act like that why you get to act like that right well, it's no different mm -hmm. right they just don't have the experience so they gotta they gotta they gotta do what they see and if they see you living a certain type of way or treating people a certain They're type of way talking a certain type of way listening to a certain type of music they're going to repeat that, right? So they're mm -hmm. a true reflection. I think having children is probably the greatest gift life can give you. Other than okay. life, other than your life itself, like producing life and being able to raise life, yeah. it's, it's such a great gift. Um, and it's a challenge as well. 
right? It's definitely a challenge because it forces <laughs> it forces you to grow, right? Yeah. It forces you to grow. You get to learn more patience. And rapid. Yeah. It's yeah. a rapid growth. Absolutely. Most of the time, if Absolutely. you're like single or you're by yourself, you can take your time with your growing process. When you have kids and you want it so bad not to inflict on them your issues, mm. oh, baby, it's, it's like, yeah. it's speed time. Like, no, God, like, get this out of me and I want it out of me the quickest way. Yeah. Show me how to actually work through this. Show me how to grow through this. Show me what do I have to do so that yeah. my kids won't experience this or my kids won't it, like mimic my behaviors yeah. and my bad traits. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're a loving parent, if you really love your kids the way you do, the way you say you do, um, you'll do everything in your power to grow you Yeah. so that you can raise them better. Mm -hmm. Right. And show them and teach them um, the proper way to live life and the proper way to treat others and the proper way to go about handling difficult situations yeah right? you have to be that example like yeah. one thing i love to say everyone all like even when i am she's just one mm -hmm. all your kids are so loving they're so nice like yeah. literally and naomi she's not talking yet fully but noel she spews love big time to everyone big time everyone yeah. like and that's a big reflection on us because is nothing but love in this house. And yeah. we always, you know, use that example. Like whenever we have guests, that's the first thing. Like it's love. Like she's so kind. So I'm grateful for that. Of course, yeah. there's other things that we have to work through. But yeah, for the most part, I'm so happy that God does the work in both of us individually so that it doesn't reflect in our children. Absolutely. Because it shows at a young age first. And I don't want neither one of them to get 16 and then I'm locked up because I didn't beat them because yeah. I don't work out my anger issues and now they're walking into that and now yeah. it's disrespectful. Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, um, it's definitely a process of growth for yourself, you know, when you have children. And, you know, if you, if you like I said, if you say that you love your kids the way you do, um, then you're going to work on you. you you're going to get better. Example. Yeah, you got to be the example. And that, you know, that really concludes this episode. Being an example, uh, living, a, living your life in a way to where you're the light of the world, you're the light of the room, mm -hmm. wherever it is that you go, um, you just, you, you, you give off this aura. Radiate light. Yeah, you radiate light. You give off this aura about you that you're just different. You interpret life in a different way. You treat people with respect. You're, you're, you ooze love, right? That's really what we should be doing. So is there anything else that you had to say? Oh, find out what your light is. <laughs> and walk in it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Like, comment, subscribe, share. And uh, we'll see y'all next week. Let love fill your hearts, family. Peace, Peace. love, and blessings. Bye. Thank you.